Hello everyone, I'm Adam Papagan. Welcome to another episode of There's a Place, the ASMR talk show. The show that feels good to hear. We've got a great show tonight planned. Uh, before we get into that, if you follow me on social media, uh, it's my name, Adam Papagan, by the way, if uh, you want to do that. But uh, you'll know there's a clip making the rounds of me appearing on the Jerry Springer show. Not as a guest, but at the end of the show, if you're not familiar, they have a segment called the Springer Sound Off, where the audience is allowed to make jokes uh, at the guest's expense. So I went, um, which is why I was out a couple weeks ago, but planned a trip to Connecticut just for this purpose to go on the show. Really was a dream come true. It's just such a good show. Um, iconic show, really. It's not going to be on forever. It's on 27 years it's been on, so I knew I had to get there. but. Um, Went there, I got to shake Jerry's hand, it was real fun, and and I got to do my big joke, which one of the stories took place at Waffle House, and uh, so my joke was uh, to the people at Waffle House, I asked if when they had sex, if it was smothered, covered, or scattered, which is how the potatoes are prepared at Waffle House. Um, Went good to put on the the Jerry Facebook page, it was nice. Um, After the show, when we went to the taping, we met a group of kids who, they were all 19, 20 years old. They had appeared on the show. We had watched them be on the show. And uh, they were, uh, you know, they'd said they'd never left Alabama before. This was their uh, only trip. They're like, yeah, we get to go to Connecticut and New York. And by New York, they just went to the airport. But it, it was cute. And they were really excited. And, um, you know, I realized that. Uh, this show, even if people do say it's trashy or it's fake or whatever, it does help people because those kids never would have been able to leave Alabama. And uh, I you know, got another TV appearance out of it, being on the Jerry Springer show. And incidentally, the segment with those kids that we met was cut out of the final episode, but theirs was the fakest one. So at least they got to go to Connecticut. Folks, we have the number one Uber driver in the entire world, uh, if, if not officially, uh, at least in my heart, is Neil Hollywood. He's going to be on in a minute. But first, uh, another set of commercials here. If you want one of these commercials, hit me up on social media, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you got to do, uh, and I will make you a commercial. They're $5 a month. So take a look at those, and we'll be back in just a minute with Neil Hollywood. Coming this fall to the Arroyo Channel, Home Time, the new model of the all-American family. Oh, it's funny. Trust us. Trust? Trust. There will be laughs. No one could doubt this. How could they? Surprises. Surprise! Intrigue. That is interesting. What else? And sentimental moments. Dad, please, what are you not telling yourself? Yeah, things uh, seem to be going pretty well here. Duh. Tune in or else. I tell you it all. So come on home to America's new sitcom family. Home! I'm inside my home! Home! Try not to enjoy this too much. Coming to the Arroyo Cable Network, home time. If you can hear me. Monrovia. Music. Monrovia. Music, it's a music fest. Oh yeah. Acoustic, rock. How does it make me feel? You don't need to be a professional entertainer. Passion makes the way. Folks, my guest tonight I met initially, I think, at a public access station. He's a budding media personality himself, but he's found a whole new passion in driving for Uber Eats. Please welcome Neil Hollywood. Thank you, thank you. Hey, how's that hanging, Neil? Good, good, good. Ooh, so out in the wilderness, I like it. Yeah, so you are the number one ranked Uber driver in the world, 
Or were you kind of using hyperbole when you said that? Because I've been telling people. Well, okay, here's the thing about that. Now, I don't have my certificate yet. Uh -huh. But all indications are that it's, it's accurate. And I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. First of all, I drive Uber Eats, yeah. not Uber Passenger. So, Uber, so they classify the drivers separately. Yeah, you know, technically, Uber Eats is like we're the bottom of the totem pole. Um, That's not a very high totem pole either. No, no, no. Um, so, but the advantage with Uber Eats is you get your trip count up because you're picking up food, dropping it off all day. And now, you're not dealing with people either. No people. So my driving skills are well suited for cheeseburgers, not, not people. Yeah. You know, if I, had, if I drove people, I'd have to actually stop for three seconds. You know, with pet cheeseburgers, I'm just kind of flying through there. But not really. Um, no, but, I, you know, I've run into different Uber Eats drivers. You know, you see them at the pickup stops. And I, I talk to them, like, you know, to get some numbers. And no, they, no one's even getting close. So this is a designation you've given yourself, basically. Well, I did talk to the Uber people. Because I, I asked them, I went to a meeting, and I asked them a very specific question, which is, uh, who has the record for the most deliveries in a week? Because I want to break that record. And um, they didn't know the answer. So they have a level called the highest level. They, they rank you. So it's silver, gold, platinum, and black level. Now, you have to get up to a certain amount of numbers to be ranked. So right now I'm a platinum ranked, but two weeks ago I got it up to black. I got it up to 152 trips in a week. Jeez. 152. So it took me seven days though. So, you know, but I have a, a, a mindset when I'm out there. Uh, I like to look at myself like a fisherman. So I like my car is like a, like a fishing vessel. So I'm going out there. I, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going fishing. And every time I get a call, and it's like seven, eight bucks. I think it's like, oh, I, I can't, caught seven, eight fish. So I'm just letting them pile up. So each fish is one dollar? One dollar is each yeah. fish, okay. And then I take the fish back and keep the money. Okay. So catch and release. Like 150 <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah. So were you out driving for Uber today? Yeah, I just came back today. I came straight over here. But see, look, for me to get the numbers up high, like yesterday I left my house. Okay, here's the thing. The main concentration zone for Uber Eats is the LA market from like where USC is all the way to Santa Monica, you know. Now, so downtown and west. That whole Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, Hollywood, all that. Because it's a luxury to, to do it. That and um, first of all, they, they've, they only opened up Uber Eats December 2016, so it's not a year yet. So it's brand new. And you know, Uber came from San Francisco. So th this concept of the food is like, it's really kind of new, um, but that's where they're primarily marketing it, yeah. So, so I'm usually in that area. I, I call it the zone, because I feel like, like when I go in there, like I'm plugged in, like, like somebody just plugged me into a socket and then I'm up for like hours. Like, so yesterday I, I turned on the app around five o'clock and today's what, 10 o'clock? So we're talking what? I slept for two five hours, hours. maybe? Oh, 5 a.m. 5 p.m. yesterday. 5 p.m. yesterday. Yeah. And you've been driving all night? No, well, here's what, here's, here's what I like about it. Okay, so uh, I drive for a few hours and I'll stop and I'll, like, I went to the park and I'll play basketball at the beach. For like an hour or two and then I, I turn turn the app back on because once you turn the app on they know where you're at if you turn it off they can't send you any calls so like once it's on they like they keep like so you're you're driving one ding you got another one so like oh once you drop that one off so there's no time to really think you're just mm -hmm. so i mean there's, there's it's kind of cool because like i just checked the numbers I've, i'm up to like 900 and 18 trips total so i'm closing in on a thousand how long have you been doing this two months two months two months so i got their attention pretty quickly 
because I... Because you're I, always talking about it on social media. <laughs> I love the way you write about riding for, driving for Uber Eats. Oh, thank you. It's, it's a, and let me point out, this is not a commercial for Uber Eats. I don't yeah. encourage you. Neil, we've never used the service. Neil is just so into this. <laughs> I find it fascinating. Well, the, the, even the Uber people thought it was fascinating because <laughs> they, cause they got a hold of me pretty quickly and they're like, you know, we want to do a story on you for our Uber platform or whatever. I don't know what they were talking about. Okay, so they sent me a questionnaire, then they did a phone interview, and then they just sent a photographer to do some photos, we with the car and all that stuff. And I told them, I said, here's the funny thing. I told them, I said, look, I, I'm kind of looking at this like a video game. You know, not like a normal person. Oh, well, that's clear. Yeah, like like a, I, like I, like a like if I'm inside of Tron or something. You know, once I'm in there and it's on, it's like ding ding ding. <sighs> you know. And the game is getting the, fish. The game is just to rack up the points. You know, it's funny because Uber sent me a questionnaire. One question. They said, Neil, we 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 have a question for you. They said, on a scale of one to ten. What would you recommend Uber Eats to your friends to drive? And I said, I thought about it and I go, five. You know, I'm, I'm promoting Uber Eats, but I'm, I said a five. And they said, five, why five? I said, because I'm looking at this like, you know, like a game. But if I had to recommend this to somebody and they're looking at this like money, I don't know if it's, it's that much money. <laughs> yeah, well, that's always what's kind of like... When Uber did the story on you, yeah. they didn't send you like a bonus check or anything, did they? No, no so not you, yet. You're, no. you're spending a considerable amount of your well, personal capital, your credibility on promoting. Well, that's, well, the thing is, you know, there's a lot of potential with the Uber thing. Like, okay. But you're already making a hundred, how many deliveries could you make well, realistically? My, well, okay, when I, to get to 152, that's my, that's the record now. Yeah. It took seven days, you know, and some of those days are like 12, 14 hours because you don't know where they're going to come from. See, the thing about the, the thing about the day is you don't know where you, once you turn on, you have no idea where your day's going to go. You know, it could be, could be like a bunch of little ones, you know, but for me, I like getting out of the car. A regular Uber driver, they never get out of the car. So I park and I have to get out and I stroll into restaurants in Beverly Hills, West Hollywood. I like that. Cause I'm coming, coming, coming in, everybody's eating. You know, they already think I'm part of the ambiance. You know? Yeah. But you could just go in those restaurants on your own. No, I could, but I, a lot of them I never knew about them. Oh, okay. Like LA, like, have you been, how many do you go to? How many different restaurants? Yeah. I try to eat a new restaurant every day. So, there, I mean, it's a it, lot, yeah. there, and you would never run out in LA. Yeah, right. You know, so I like that too. You see everything. You see, I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing a lot. Hey, were you familiar with the Southern California area much before you did this? Well, I used to be a motorcycle courier after high school, delivering legal documents. Yeah. So that I was in Century City, LA, a lot. Um, so I was kind of familiar with the area, and then. Uh, so, yeah. But you know, even like what I'm, the potential with the Uber Eats is not the Uber Eats itself. You know, like I said, I, I used to deliver legal documents. Now, when you deliver a legal document, you go from law office A to law office B. That little paperwork, they, they, they might charge 70 bucks. What's the difference between that and a cheeseburger? Well, I mean, depending on what kind of law it is, somebody's life could be on the line. No, no, no. As, a, as delivering the documents, oh, you're just picking guy? up the file and dropping it off. Yeah. But there's no difference between picking up a document or picking up a cheeseburger. So I'm like, you know, Uber, they, it could be really an Uber courier, you know, because there's a lot of money in that. Like, I'm already picking up cheeseburgers. You guys are paying me like five, six bucks, you know. But if I was doing legal documents, that could be like 12 bucks, 13 bucks. So, you know, the actual pay on it is not that high. But yeah. I, there's more potential. <laughs> but that you'll get back into legal currying? No, that, that, that the Uber thing could develop into some, maybe something else. I don't know. Because I, It's just seeing where things take you. Well, and this is getting you out of the house. Well, for example, get. for example, um, 
now, so there's, there's, a, there's a dual layer to this Uber story. A dual layer. Okay. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> the dual layer is um, when I'm out there, what I've also been doing is documenting the homeless situation going on in L.A. Okay, and, I, and I've been talking to homeless people. I've been listening to some of their stories. I've been giving them food, giving them money. You know, because I get tips a lot. So sometimes if I get a lot of tips, I feel like, ah, oh, you know, let me buy this person like a donut or something. You know, and, you know, it's like, I feel like, hey, look, I'm sharing the wealth. I just got six bucks from somebody. What's $2 for you? Yeah. You know, this morning I gave some guy five bucks. You know, I was in Santa Monica and he was sleeping. He was sleeping there. And I'm just like, like, dang, this guy's just sleeping here. So... I was waiting for him to wake up so I could talk to him, but he never really woke up. And then when I had to leave, I had five bucks in my pocket and I went over to give it to him, but there was two people there. Wait, you were just, you were just waiting for this guy to wake up? No, I wanted, I usually chit chat. Like, Did you know this guy? No, nah, I was like, I was just gonna be like, so what are you doing here? Like, what's going on? Cause I, it's a spot I'd never seen nobody. They're everywhere, homeless people yeah. are everywhere. You know, so, so I've been documenting that, you know, um, I'm definitely getting a lot of different video throughout LA because I'm, you know, kind of putting the story together. So Uber's paying me. In the beginning, I was only focused on just the Uber because you're just driving. We're turn right here, left. Oh, oh right. so you, you can't think of anything else. But after like a few weeks, you're like, Pfft. oh, Joe's Pizza Shack. Yeah, I know where that's at. So your mind could say, oh, what's that person doing? So sometimes I'll pull over. I see something, I'll just pull over, stop the car, I don't care, put the hazards on, go back over there, and I'm filming something. Because I saw something like people walking by. A lot of interesting things happen in LA. There are, and to be down at ground level. Well, so. for example, I'll be up on Melrose, okay? Have you ever been to Melrose during the day? Mm -hmm. uh, do you see how many different people are out there just like, thinking they're coming over here doing their, their modeling career is going to get started on them. Yeah. You know, but most people never see that. You know, sometimes I'm in Santa Monica and I'll show them a video of I, I was just in Beverly Hills and I realize, even though they're so close, these Santa Monica people, they never go to Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills people never go over here. So it's very interesting. Very interesting. You know, um, I've identified the homeless into three categories now. Three separate categories. Okay. If you want to know. Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. Now, the LA, there's the LA homeless, the Los Angeles, there's the Hollywood homeless, and the Santa Monica homeless. So, Hollywood, LA, and Los Angeles, it's all part of LA. But, the, the homeless in those areas, they have different characteristics I figured out now. I've been out there for like 10 weeks. The LA homeless are like community-based, meaning they're people who homeless, 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 homeless. At night, they don't move around. During the day, they scatter around. At night, they hunker together. They got all their stuff um, low-key at night. The Hollywood homeless are like young, strung out kids, you know, where they'll come up to you, got like a bag of stuff, purple hair, you look in their eyes and they're just like, you're not even there. The Santa Monica homeless are so interesting because at like two in the morning to like five, they move around. Like if you ever go down to Santa Monica at 2.30 in the morning, no one does. Everything's closed. It's like the walking dead. You just drive down, they're just crossing the street at different angles. So I'll park the car and I'll go drink coffee and hang out, but it's not like The Walking Dead. They're not, there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. They're not like scary, you know, they, they want to talk to you. So very interesting. Yeah. You're a pretty social guy. Do you talk to people everywhere you go? Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Have you always been that way? Well... Probably. I mean, I used to get in trouble. It was funny because the only time I ever got in trouble in school would be the parent-teacher conference. And it was, my dad would be like, the teacher says you talk too much. Yeah. And I'd be like, 
The teacher would, I'd be sitting over here, she'd move me. Neil, you're talking too much over here, move over here. And there's new kids, I thought it was a new audience. Let's yeah, start you just talk to anyone. Pretty much. Everybody's got a story. I'm finding that out. Oh, we're here, we're in Beverly Hills right now. Oh. Do you know, did you recognize this spot? Yeah, I see you all. Yeah. You cruise by this often? Yeah. I mean, Beverly Hills is a very interesting place. There's no fast food there. Fat burger? No. Yeah, there's no fast food. Yeah, there's fast food places, but... Uh, I don't think there's any drive through in Beverly Hills. There's not. It's part of the charter of the city or whatever. Yeah, you know, but... You know, it's just so it's so interesting for me because like if you wanted to be seen in LA, like if you wanted to just be seen, I don't think you could. Be, Uber each driver would be the only way, because I'm in so many different spots, that sometimes it's like I I feel like the eyeballs. You're just like there. Some people are like, do I know this person? Who is this person? And then boom, I'm in and out, and I'm into another spot. Do you kind of make a scene when you go in? No, not really, but. So you're talking about getting a silver platter. Oh, yeah, I haven't gotten that yet. That's right. What are you going to do with that? Well, you know, just, I was thinking about giving better service, putting the food on the platter and giving it. It's, you sound like you give great service as it is. You know, I, I, I tend to give really good service. I, I mean, because the people, look, when, when you're delivering food, they're happy when you show up. That's true. It's not true. like you're picking them up and they have to go somewhere they don't want to go. They're like, oh, my hamburger's here. Oh, my Thai food's here. You get a lot of stories, some funny ones. You know, I, I've gone to this one house. I've gone to places where they tried to scare you, you know, like a prank. Yeah. I went into this one old building. Normally, I don't really like to get out of the car too much. I'll call, hey, your food's here, every now and then. So I go into this building, second floor, creaky old alley building, creak, creak, creak. And I'm walking down this hall, I'm like, so I get to the door. I, at first, I'm looking for the door. Then I get to the door, but the door was open, so I didn't see the number. So I'm walking up to the door, and there's this mirror with the, some scary-ass thing on it. I'm looking at it, and my brain's like processing it, and out of nowhere, this guy comes out through some curtain, like a, like a vampire or something. And he goes, oh, my food. And I, I looked at him, and I started laughing, like, dang, man, you were trying to scare me. Do you think he was trying to scare you? I think he was. I think he was like, that's Who would his do little, that? I think it was like some kind of little game he probably does for delivery people. Just to, just, just to mess with them. Just to mess with them, huh? Yeah. You know, but the other thing is you do get some free food, too. Yeah, people don't claim the food. They order the food, you go to deliver it, and they never come. Some, if it's a weekend, it's a McDonald's delivery late. Maybe they were drunk and they ordered it, and then they fell asleep. So, so you get some free McDonald's every I've, time. I've gotten free McDonald's. The last McDonald's I got for free, I, I gave away to the, some, a homeless guy I met on Hollywood Boulevard. But there, there's a lot of homeless out there, you know, and, I, and I've seen, I pretty much, I'm pretty confident, I've seen every homeless camp like area where they could set up in the LA area. You know, it's like, I don't think people would believe like in parts of Wilshire, you're driving and there's tent, 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 parking meter, tent, tent, parking meter. You're like, what the heck is this? You know, it's a- um, What about the homeless situation do you find so interesting? Well, the thing about the homeless situation is, you know, Sometimes I have to sleep in my car to get the numbers up, so, you know. Neil, you don't have to do that, No, though. but I, I do that because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably self-competitive to the max. Yeah. But, you know, okay, the thing with the homeless situation that touches me the most is sometimes I, I really, 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 really look at them and think, dang, I could easily have been them. I really believe that. Sometimes, like some of these strung out kids in Hollywood, I think, what if I had a, like the wrong friend at the wrong time? Or somebody offered me something and I just took it. And I'm like, oh, give me another one. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah, if that's true, if you're this crazy about Uber Eats, imagine how you would take to heroin or something. Oh, yeah, see, there's, yeah. so there's some doors in life I know I can never open. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I already know that. But, 
you know, with the homeless situation, you know, it's it's something that most people... Okay, it's a situation that in 2011, when I moved back home, this is off subject, you know, I, would, I used to do marketing, I moved back home, started fresh, I was going to Starbucks every day. That's when I was learning about social media, how Twitter worked, a lot of stuff, just reading stuff all day. But I, would, I was at Starbucks all day, all day long, all day day long now when you're there all day long after a while you pick up all the patterns meaning you know the bank girls 12 o'clock coffee run you know the Carmax 2 o'clock people you just all these people and what I started to notice was the different homeless people who would come through checking the trash can because you're in their gravitational pattern just because you're plopped there and you plopped there long enough that it just happens otherwise you just you never notice so when I started to see the homeless people, I just would see them every day, and I would you make a mental connection. Like I would start thinking, well, I wonder what that guy's name is. Oh, you know, oh look, this person's got a different shirt today. Oh, why is he wearing the Phoenix Suns basketball? I'm gonna get him a Laker hat. So you start to kind of like, you know, you see him, see him, see him, and then one day it like kind of like a awakening where I was like, you know what? You know, yeah, maybe homeless people smell and maybe they're dirty. You know, those are just characteristics. But there's no, they're no different than the guy with all the money. I mean, you, you got to respect that guy the same as that guy. You can't, you can't kick this guy. You can't kick that guy. And, you know, it's easy to want to wanna like kick, him. kick this guy, yeah. you know. But in the reality, that's a human being. That's a human being. Now, okay, yeah, maybe he smells. May, I can give you all that. You know, so it would, like these layers of perception were just unraveling, you know, and then it just was like, I knew that was the truth. So then when I started going out here, it was like seeing more, you know, because, you know, okay, I was in Santa Monica and I was just watching this guy sit against the wall just like for like five minutes. I was just sitting watching, just watching him. And I'm like, what the heck is this guy going to do all day long? Like, I, I'm going to leave in two seconds, and I have all things to do. And this person's like, what do they do all day? You know? So, so, like, now I'm like, I think, like, maybe some people are like, they're trapped in a day yeah. that they just cannot get out of. So it's very interesting, I think. Like a Groundhog's Day situation? I don't know. I don't know. But I mean... It must be terribly boring to be homeless. It depends. I, do, I don't know. It's like there's a lot to, to know about. It's, it's a society problem, you know. So I'm out there. I'm, I'm seeing stories. So this is, this is the, the, the adventure part of the, the Uber thing. So the Uber is like a vehicle. That, literally. Literally. So like, it's literal, yeah. right. So I'll, I'll say, oh, let me go work for like four or five hours. Go work. Wind up in some random place. Turn off the app. Go chill out. Usually I'm in some coffee shop, chill out, boom, and just go back about again, you know. The, the funny thing is, like, when you're driving in the street in L.A., you don't really get tired. You have all these cars coming at you all day. So your stimulus is, like, really heightened. If I was on the freeway for the same amount of time... Yeah, it's your turn to keep your voice down. If I was on the freeway for that time, yeah. I'd be like... But when you're on the street... You have no time. Do, do, do. So, I think my work stamina is like really high right now. Cause I can go like maybe twenty hours. <laughs> that's great. You know, where you're just like. Don't you think that's dangerous though? Well. To try to be behind the wheel and you're tired. First of all, you're not with the passengers. So it's not as dangerous. <laughs> but, but you I, could I, still no, hit. It's no, somebody else. No, or... I haven't. I've never gotten that tired. If I get tired, I just pull over and I'll sleep for a little while. I will, you know. But no, I haven't really gotten that tired. What do you listen to when you're cruising around? I don't listen to any music when I'm cruising around. I'm usually thinking. I'm thinking of either some random thoughts, a movie idea. Uh huh. Uh, just where I'm going, uh, just different things throughout the day. What, what I just see, you know, 
because you've just seen so much. Like, you have to process all that. All in a day, it's like a day just Yeah. Then you, and you come out and you want to go do it again and again and again. I mean, Los Angeles, I've never seen all of this like this. And I don't think anyone has. Like, you know, like for example, if somebody even works in Beverly Hills, they usually probably take the same route, park in the same spot, leave at the same time. So what they see is all very narrow. You know, when, I, when I'm over it, and on this spot, and then this spot, and 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 then I'm over here, then I'm over there, you see so much. What's your favorite neighborhood in LA? Mm, probably like Santa Monica. Santa Monica, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills. Okay, yeah. so nice neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these deliveries are to or from McDonald's? No, there's a lot of different restaurants. It's funny because the, I've never ordered from Uber. But what I figured out is the people who order from Uber, when I deliver, like if I delivered you Thai food, you don't even know where that food came from. Because you order just... It's, it's funny because it's almost going to become where people think they're just ordering Uber. So like you could order from Rosie Thai, but when I come, I say, did you order Uber? And you're like, yeah, I yeah, ordered Uber. So now you're just thinking, it's just Uber. Like, you didn't order from no Rosie Thai, you ordered Thai from Uber. Does that make sense? Yeah, but when you're on the app, you can, my girlfriend's used it, you can, you look at the menu, like you know what restaurant no, you're picking. No, you do, but most people, when you talk to them, they don't even know where the heck the food came from. Because it's in a brown bag yeah. sealed up, mm -hmm. they're just like, which is which is interesting because it's it's changing. It's like it's it's literally going to be like Uber's going to be like a language, like like a, like it's a restaurant. <laughs> so, so what did you do before you were driving for Uber? Well, I spent like almost two years. I was at uh, K Jam. K Jam, yeah, creating content for public broadcast, just making videos here and there for businesses for a little bit of money. Oh yes, yeah, so let's talk about your, your, your business because I'm kind of doing that now. Okay. Uh, for this show, we have, we have commercials now. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. $5 a month. That's it? Wait, what do you get for $5 a month? I make a video and then it, it airs uh, before and after the show. For $5? Yeah. That's it? Five a month, yeah. That's, that's a great deal. That's a, that's a very good deal. Yeah. That's a very good deal. Yeah. Well, see, the way I figure it, see, this is some kind of can relate to you on having some weird convoluted logic. But I figure it, got to have content for the show. Otherwise, I'm going to have to think up what the videos are going to be about. Oh, this way, someone yeah. says, hey, here's $5, and this is, here's what the thing's going to be about. Now, have you been selling them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, um, it's subscription-based. Oh, OK. So um, we have four right now, four patrons um, at $5 each. Wait, so if I give you $5 a month, mm -hmm. can you promote my Instagram account? Yeah, whatever you want. What? Yeah, it's a good deal, right? I think it's a fantastic yeah. deal. That might be the best deal I've heard all day. Yeah. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. Compared so to that, that $12 espresso I just I had in Beverly Hills, this is a very good deal. Yeah, well, think about, you know, think about something like that. Talk to the Uber people. Talk to the Uber people. Yeah, but see, the, the Uber people, it's, it's interesting because... They should hire you. You're the... Because you have all the stuff in the news of the CEO sexually harassing well, people and stuff. You're so, a nice, honest guy. You should be the CEO of Uber. Well, maybe. You never know. Because, look, my Instagram account, I redid it. My Instagram account's Neil Hollywood. So I, I had a Neil Hollywood Instagram. I started basically from scratch. So all my posts are like Uber related, like the story. So I've been posting a lot of like different art I see in LA. Like if I see a cool thing on the side of a, you know, on the yeah. side of the building, take that picture, tag it. So what Uber recently, just the other day, they're like, we're having an art thing in Miami, you know, submit your, your, your name, you know, if we want, we'll fly you down there in the first week of December. So I'm like, okay. I'm already posting about all this art stuff, and now you guys are doing art stuff. So you never mm. know. You never know. You might get some kind of trip or something out of it. Maybe. Who knows? But. 
You uh, you saw Will Ferrell recently? Oh when you're out yeah, around? that was funny. I saw him. I was in. I was working out at the Beverly Hills Park, and I'm I'm just working out, and um, soccer kid setting up. I'm running around. Some guy standing there talking. I'm looking at the guy and I'm like, oh man, that's Will Ferrell. And I'm doing my workout, and this kid kicks the soccer ball past me, like just right past you know. Soccer ball passed me. I'm, I'm the closest one that I should have got the ball. I should have got the ball. But I'm looking at him, and he's, he's kind of gave me that look like, are you going to get the ball? And then he realized I wasn't going to get that ball because I just went into my exercise. So he's like, eh, but it wasn't like a big thing. He's like, oh, okay. So he runs, and he went right as soon as he ran past me. He started doing all his voices. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get the ball. And I turn, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is too funny. You know, and then he gets the ball, goes back to the kid. And I leave, and I go, hey, Will, see you later, man. And he looked at me like, this guy did know my name. Because he gave me that look like, doesn't this guy recognize me? So why didn't you get the ball for him? Because I was thinking, oh, my gosh, that's Will Ferrell. And in all that time, it took too long. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Overstimulated. Yeah. Plus, you were thinking about all your other stuff. Right. And then once I realized that I didn't make the move, and he was already making the move, it was, it was kind of funny in my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, dang, I didn't even get the ball for Will Ferrell. <laughs> so. Did you think about telling him any of your movie ideas? No, because I don't know how that would have gone over. But it did look like he wanted to talk. Yeah, well, if you would gotten him the ball, that could have been your end. Well... But that could also be a conversation piece. Next, hey, well, Next, you know what? Remember, I didn't get you the ball. I apologize. Apologize. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? And I could be humble. Up, and he could do. Oh. Or if he remembered, he's going to be like, okay, so you did it on purpose. But. It'll make an impression. Yeah. It's funny. It was funny. It was a moment. Yes. So. What else do you want to talk about? Oh, well, I was just about to ask another question. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. But um, I was going to ask is uh, what's going on? See, Neil, I knew even before the, your, your, the hmm? wilderness out there. Oh, yeah. You're taking a look? Yeah, it's kind of chilly. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Neil, um, you said, you know, it's like a game or whatever. They load it up where you're going to go point A to point B. It's kind of like mindless or whatever. But there have to be some bad things about Uber Eats. Bad things? Like, have you ever had a bad experience? Somebody who was just awful to deliver well, to? Okay. The only, well, the only bad experiences really have been, okay, yesterday I kind of flipped out. Uh-oh. And I feel bad about this. And it never happened. This is like, the only thing that annoys me about the Uber Eats is traffic and waiting. I don't like waiting and I don't like traffic. So traffic was getting the best of me. It was like, it was like this internal battle that I had to overcome where I, I would start getting traffic and I'd start cussing at the traffic. And these are all things I never do in normal life because I never, was never in traffic. So yesterday I was in the McDonald's drive-thru for like 40 minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize the 40 minutes to justify what I'm mm -hmm. about to say, but there's no justification. So I got out of the car and I, I was yelling, like, what the F is taking so effing long? I mean, like, what the F are you guys, like 40 effing minutes? And then he said, we're short-staffed. And at that moment I realized Dang, I, sh I, I blew a gasket. And all day I've been thinking about that, today. And all the scenarios that would have annoyed me before, like waiting this and that today, did not. Because I, I kept thinking like, uh, It could be worse. Yeah, you know, but it's a lesson. It's a lesson. Like, you know, it's, it's life on the road, Adam. You know, <laughs> so it's a fisherman, the lonely life of a fisherman out there. You know? Well, you, you don't have to, to do this. 
No, I don't. You could find something else. No, that's true. If it really but, is lonely. Or... But I wouldn't be able to see all what's going on in L.A. I wouldn't be able to figure out the homeless situation. Oh, so you think you've got it figured out? What's the solution? No, no, no. Oh. I'm, I'm figuring it out. Oh. Okay, I'm figuring it out. Okay. Uh, now, I told, I've identified three different characteristics. I didn't know that before. I would have just thought homeless, homeless. What is the, what's the difference? So it's like learning about the environment. You know, one of the things that I, I do see is, they're, they're, one of the things that should be done is there needs to be some kind of way where they could clean their hands like thoroughly. You know, they're it just, you know, a, nobody wants to shake a dirty hand. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's, put so, that on your bumper sticker. Yeah, nobody wants to shake it again. Uber but, Eats. Yeah. I mean, it's society, Adam. Otherwise, so, I'd just be delivering cheeseburgers. Yeah. So there's, there's double layers out there. So what's... It, do you have, like, a five-year plan with this? It's like, I want to do 300 deliveries next by next year, a week... Or you've you saying before the show you've you've kind of hit the max pretty quickly. Well, no, one fifty two. That was a lot of work to get that. I mean, that's a lot of work. You know. If you had assistance, do you think it would go any quicker? <sighs> no, I th I'm I'm thinking. You know that might be. I think I could get up to two hundred. You know, I'm I'm I want to go one more time where I'm just like. All right. You know, I, I kind of also feel like, you know, setting up a temp down in LA, I'm tempted to. Right with the homeless people. Like, literally park my car, pull up a tent on Wilshire, and just be like, if they're sleeping on a tent, I might as well sleep on a tent. Why not? It's like urban camping. It's, okay, yesterday I was in Santa Monica on the boardwalk. At 3 a.m., 3 a.m., yeah. I made a video. I was the only person in Santa Monica in the boardwalk at 3 a.m., and I, the weather was perfect. And I made the video, and I said in the video, I said, look, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of people in the L.A. area, millions. Why am I the only one here at 3 a.m. enjoying this weather out of all these millions of people? you telling me that not even one other person out of... 10 million people is even here? What's wrong with you people? Well, it's 3 in the morning, though. 50, 60, 100 people? You're telling me everybody's asleep? People's, people have, some people go to uh, sleep during the day. They're up at night. There's, there's a lot of people who don't have work tomorrow. There's a lot of people who don't have school tomorrow. Okay, we're talking millions. How am I the only one? The only one. I think you just have a unique perspective and I, a unique I mean, uh, drive and that's what brought you there maybe but there should I wish be there more. could be more Neil Hollywoods <laughs> uh, just don't ever clone me don't ever clone don't me. ever clone you nah. why not because it would you could use the same Uber Eats account no here I think we're, we're cooking up a plan here Neil no your whole army of Neil Hollywoods Nah, <laughs> nah. Because see, the thing is, I had, I, I got lucky. I got good life experiences to give me good perspective. If you clone me, how do you know that clone's gonna have those good experiences? Well, because you would have to teach the clone. No, but I had good life experiences from life that I don't know if you can recreate. Maybe you can. So, I don't like, know. what have you experienced that a clone couldn't? Well. It's just, the, you know, the things that you learn from the people around you, you know, I don't know. Maybe the clone could have good life experiences, but I don't know about cloning. It's another subject. Yeah, entirely. Yeah. Well, Neil, how do you, you said it yourself, that you, you worked for KGM for two years. Volunteer. Volunteer, but still. Yeah. It's a television studio. Right. Interesting characters coming in and out of there. Yep. And you said that nobody would ever ask you about that. 
you're around, you're trying to make these videos for businesses, people wouldn't pay you and stuff. But now that you're driving for Uber Eats, it's a story I've got on this show and stuff. Everyone seems to be I know. interested in this. It's, I know. Before the show, this guy was asking a million questions. It's, it's, it, that, that's very interesting. You know, when I was doing, it's, I wasn't making any money at the studio. I don't know, maybe I, because I started making money all of a sudden. You know, a lot, even when I was at the studio, people were pretty much thinking I'm wasting my time. What the heck is this guy doing? You know, but I was kind of just following my intuition. Like I knew I was supposed to be there learning something, putting myself in a position to, um, to, move, to move on. But you did ask me a question. You said, what's your five to 10 year plan? And yeah. Do I expect to be driving Uber Eats in five years? No, no. Um, I'm just putting up big numbers right now. Just, <laughs> just like, just like <laughs> look, my mindset is simple. I'm serious. If I could get a world record every single day, I'm gonna go for it. Every single day. If I could get a world record, I'm going for it. Now some days, you're, you're, the weather's like, I, I'm not gonna break my record yet. But my mindset is always, yesterday's Neil's numbers, those numbers are whack. Like I'm, I'm talking to myself like that all the time. Like whatever I did yesterday, today, that was already weak, I could beat that. So you, just constantly just <laughs> playing a game with yourself. But see, you're kind of at the mercy though of what n orders come in from where and at what times. No, that's true. You're yeah. already delivering as much as you can, it yeah. seems. You know, you're, you're totally right about that. that. That's the wild card, you know. So I set the bar high and I try to ch go for it, but if things aren't working out, then I shift my mindset to just be like in chill mode. So I'm not like, Oh my gosh, I didn't break my record. And I was like, eh, whatever. Tomorrow I'll break it. So there's never, never really like, except, except for yesterday when I blew the gasket. You know. But you're reset now, right? Totally, totally. No, it was an experience. I can't do that again. You know, it was just not good behavior. I've been thinking about it all day for reals. Like, like dang, I actually yelled at the person. It was like two in the morning. I was like, <laughs> What the F is taking so long? Hurry the F up. You know, do you know how the long people are around? And then as I was walking back to the car, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. But out of 900 deliveries, one time. <laughs> That's true. That's a great average. You know, it's like, okay, it happens. It happens. What is the secret to this enthusiasm that you have for life? I'm going to be on the Uber. I'm going to say in life. Well. You've got this kind of, uh, this very positive attitude. Well, it's because I could possibly be living inside of a daydream. Um, everything in my mind is like an adventure. Every, I, that's a key, one of the key words of my life. Like everything seems like some kind of adventure. And I, every day, I literally, Adam, I feel like some major thing is gonna happen every single day. You know, I feel like when I step outside, you know, like I'm like stepping onto a stage somehow. And it's like that constantly to just where it's just like, and it's so fun. Like everything is just so fun to me, I don't know. You know, I pay attention to everything. I notice all these like little things, you know, so it's a lot of curiosity. Like, oh, what's this? Yeah, what's that's that? what it is. It's a curiosity. Of every little thing. Yeah, how do you do it? It's like, oh, what's going on over here? Like, oh, what's this? You know, and it's like curiosity and adventure. You know, so to me, I'm like, dang, man, if Uber wanted me to go around the country, I'd be going and seeing getting all kinds of stories around the country. You know, so it's just, it's an adventure. I don't know, that's how I look at everything. What's your next adventure? I don't know. I've got a few that I'm kind of hoping for that could be like ginormous. The main thing about the Uber thing, okay, I got two things. Okay. The main thing about the Uber thing is it activated 
my work ethic, high level production. Meaning, I was doing a lot at the studio, but it was in a kind of a relaxed mode, you know. But this is a, a, like 12, 13, 14 hours constantly. In the beginning, you're like clonked out afterwards. Like right now, I've been up for like over 24 hours. I could probably go for another 12, 14 hours. I'm not even really tired. <laughs> You know, and then I'll go crash out for like eight hours, wake up, go do it again. Um, Is your family concerned about this behavior at all? No, they're they're Just hours and hours of driving. No, because they're they can't believe the numbers either. They're like, how many deliveries are you doing? Like, oh my gosh, like, you know. And I talk to, I run into other people that do the deliveries, and they they may go for three, four hours and you know make a little bit of money and go home like there's nobody staying out there for 14 who oh, spending the night in Santa Monica on the street <laughs> so I could be up That's at 6 a.m. already there delivering it's funny it, it's it, it's I'm telling you it's just it's such an interesting little moment of time that I keep thinking like you know if next week I'm, on, I'm in another like life cycle doing something else you know, where I, if I'm famous next week, I can't actually technically deliver pizzas anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so you better take advantage of this it's, time. That you it, have yeah, to. it's just, it, it's a fun, and it's also letting me look at it from the business aspect, like I told you, like you could do, do other things. You know, that's a CEO type thinking. And I told Uber people that. I said, um, there's some more window here to deliver, I mean, you know, p people are buying things and getting it delivered constantly. You know, Amazon's delivering to your door. Couldn't Uber do that? You know, so there's a lot of potential. The Uber thing is it, it created a new type of economy where somebody could make money working for themselves and hustle and not have to deal with anybody else and not have a business. So it's really the not having a boss. Yeah, you don't have a boss. Yeah, that's that's the real magic of it. Well, that yeah, that 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 is the magic of it because you you you'll work harder because you don't have somebody saying, "Oh, go do this at this time," which kind of a mood you're like, eh. you know. So it's 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 very interesting, you know, because Uber has a lot of competition though too. There's a lot of different food services. Have you ever thought about going to one of them? No. You could go, you know, why don't you go to one of the other and say, hey, I'm doing 150 deliveries a week with Uber. Nah, because, you, you pay know, me more? I'm the best I delivery think driver. I could, I could, if I stay loyal to Uber, I think that I could build it into something. You know, if I'm like, oh, Uber, I do half Uber, half this guy, then where's my loyalty? They're already like, yeah, you could do 200 deliveries, you ain't loyal. <laughs> you could do 500, you still ain't loyal. Do you think you could do 500? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be, no, no way. It's not in a week. No, that's uh, too many. But I don't think I've hit the ceiling yet, Adam. Wow. There's... <laughs> I know. I know. It's the competitiveness of it. I'm telling you. It activated some, a certain level of competitiveness that I just, like, I'm trying to, like, and I'm competing against myself here. I'm looking at the numbers from, like, last week, like... I can beat this. Oh, oh. Still on? yes. Wow, that, oh, that here, scared yeah. the heck out of me. I know. That helped burst. I don't know. I think we the show is almost over though. But yeah. Do you have a watch on you, Neil? Oh no. No, yeah, me neither. The clock is broken. How do so, we know? Hey, Pam, what time is it? It is time to end. Okay. See. 10.55. Wow. Neil, thank you so much oh, for coming yeah. on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, good luck with all the Uber stuff. Thank you. Until next time, this is Adam Papp again reminding you that there's a place you can go, and it's your mind. Good night. Wow. So when does that air? How that was live. So how do we watch it then? Uh, it'll be on YouTube. Oh, nice. Um, Wow. A couple days, yeah. That's good, Adam. Well, thank you very much.
Yeah, but the homeless situation is for real.